So I'm speaking with? I am Alex Handy. I am senior editor at the Software Development Times. Excellent. Alex, uh, you have a grand obsession about distributed teams, working with distributed teams. So let's just, let's maybe let's boil it down. The top two or three tools and or techniques you're seeing currently, today, the hot day, now we're in March 2015, the cool things that people need to be aware of, tools and techniques for distributed teams. Uh, well, obviously, the first thing is Git. Everybody is now on a distributed version management system. That doesn't mean you have to use Git. There are plenty of other options, such as Perforce is now a distributed man uh, uh, source code management system as of Tuesday of last week. Uh, there's Plastic SCM, there are uh, Mercurial still out there. But the key is that the distributed model allows you to really get your mind around a whole software project, no matter where you are in the world, as opposed to just pulling down your one little piece of it and then coming back with the little this little piece and offering it up and hoping to God you did it on the right branch and the right version and making sure it gets changed and merged. Uh, the, the real thing about distributed platforms that to keep in mind is that they're really just facilitating communication. If you have distributed teams, they all need to be able to talk to each other. So if that means just in getting uh, Slack, if you guys know what Slack is. I am aware of Slack. That is the hot new thing too. Yeah, exactly. Slack is eating up the valley. But Slack is just IRC, right? Like these same teams that have been using IRC for 20 odd years can now use Slack and actually embed the images, embed the code, link to a paste bin and go back and forth. It's just enabling communication. If we look at something like Atlassian, you know, Jira, really didn't do anything super new or different. They just did it really well. They let you communicate around bugs and filing issues and then having a conversation around those issues and tying it back to the source code. The big thing that they did, the big overhaul of their platform was making every single piece of their platform, every input, every bug, every response, every comment accessible via a, a REST web call or a RESTful web services call. That just means that it's even more extensible and you can use it to integrate with your specific tools, right? Your team, if you're a development team, you have tools all over the world. The more that you can dig into those tools and grab that one little input in that one little field in that database, the more you're going to be able to distribute that information to your team, and the easier it's going to be to distribute that information to your team. So why do you think Slack, let's, let's take a step back to Slack, because, I mean, geez, they're not the first one, well, it's an IRC, not the first one to have a communication tool, there's tons of them out there. Why do you think that one has taken hold and why everyone's going nuts over it? Okay, the reason Slack took over is because, first of all, it's for the cool kids. It's all the IRC cool kid hacker guys. And you consider yourself a cool kid? No, 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 but all my cool, all the guys that I talk to who are in that world, the hacker types, you know, they're on Slack immediately. Why are they on Slack? It's secure. That's one thing that they've never had on IRC. You can use SSL on IRC, but it's just a pain in the butt getting it to work on various servers. Half the servers out there have invalid uh, SSL certificates. Like, just try to sign into Freenode with SSL and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll do it right now. Yeah, go ahead and try. I mean, it might work for you. It might be very fine, but it, there's also a very good chance that it might not work just because your IRC client doesn't really deal with SSL in a proper fashion because IRC clients can be really old. Uh, the other thing that Slack allows is it, the other IRC solutions that I've seen have been less visual. They've been like web-based IRC clients, just straight up web-based IRC clients. Maybe it'll embed a Twitter thing. Maybe it'll embed like an image if you link a URL to a JPEG, it'll just put it in the stream. But what Slack really does is it lets you upload those files and play with them over here, right? Being able to share files is a huge thing. That's one thing that none of these IRC solutions seem to have is this DCC replacement, right? Remember DCC? Direct client communication. We've had that since 1995, I think, and it's completely ignored by every web-based IRC client out there because it's considered to be like a, a relic of like the warezing scene or something. But in fact, it's a very useful piece of software. And the fact that they have like a post-it board where you can just sort of DCC stuff up and everybody can see it makes Slack a really powerful piece of, of uh, a really powerful tool for communication. All right, my very last question. Is there one tool that you're not sure if this is going to work, but it's so cool and so new, you want to toy around with it? What, what, are those, what are those tools? Well, this is not necessarily related to distributed development, but certainly to distributed computing, and that's CoreOS's Rocket. I believe they're up to point, version point 0.3 now, maybe even? Like, they released this maybe three months ago. They've really been iterating on it fast. It's a, a Rocket is a whole set of stuff, but really it's a runtime for containers, and it also has sort of a meta language to describe those containers, and then they often bundle it with etcd, which was recently updated, and etcd is a high-speed key value store for storing all of the, uh, the security keys that you would use when you're spinning up your various instances in Docker, you know, it, this would not be used with Docker. It can be used with Docker, but the idea is to be an alternative to Docker. So 
So one of the problems that people have with that, uh, with a uh, Docker-based or container-based setup, is that you're just generating thousands of security keys, and, and you know everybody has to keep set, set those keys and put them onto a new instance, and then that instance goes down. You got to pull them out and put them onto a new instance. You got to check them from clients. So having that really, really high-speed uh, register that can value that can do that and can also keep track of where those services are, who's communicating with what, who's allowed to communicate with what, is really important. It's it's basically SOA re-envisioned in the container world. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.